Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tuesday Night Podcast. This is episode 20. I am your host, SBJ, and with me today, I have Alan. That is me. And I have your Valentine with you today, Sean. He's not my Valentine. He's my <laughs> Alentine. <Ooh>. Analtine? <laughs> yeah, that too. That's Already your- down here. Yeah. <laughs> This is a podcast about board games, card games, RPGs, stuff that we play. <laughs> I was trying True. to think of other things, but I couldn't. Mostly stuff that we don't play. Yeah, it's really that's really. Well, it. I think you would always have something to talk about, SBJ, if this was about console games. Console games yeah. said that yeah. weird, but this is tabletop games. <laughs> Uh, surprisingly, you'd think I, oh, I play a lot of video games, but I just play certain video games a lot, like Destiny. Um, I already said my name. I already introduced everyone else. This is a zero episode as Alan. Alan loves to name things. He loves transitions. He loves segments. It's true. Oh, yeah. You're a very organized person. Yeah. In fact, uh. Sean, your cousin, Stevie Green, did some music to celebrate the Zero episode. Uh, I asked him if he could make it a segment music, which would be like 5 to 15 seconds. So it'd be like, this is a Zero episode. But he sent a minute awesome track. So uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do with it in this episode. See if we can get it in somewhere. Something. Right. So I will go. Thanks, Sean. So our list... Our listeners are probably like, what is a zero episode? And then I insert the music here. <laughs> we'll cut that out. So that was pretty cool. That was a good thing to do. Yeah. Was, SBJ. The the post production of these podcasts are always stellar. <laughs> <laughs> so a zero episode is what we're gonna do every episode that ends with a zero. So basic math would be 10, 20. Well, we dropped the ball on 10. So 20, yeah. 30, 40. <laughs> And it's uh, going to be an entry point for new listeners. So if somebody just like discovers us on Twitter and they're like, oh, hey, I'm thinking about listening to your podcast. What's a good episode to start? And we're on episode 24. We can go, hey, you should start at 20 because that'll introduce who we were and what the show is about. And then if you like that, you can go on. Because sometimes when you jump into a podcast, you have people that have very good chemistry or have been doing it for a long time. And it's hard to identify maybe voices or who's who or what their actual stance or opinions are on certain topics. So the 20 episode is supposed to hopefully clear up some of that and be a good onboarding process for, I'm trying to throw in some buzzwords here. Onboarding was a good buzzword, man. (laughs) That was good. I had to do onboarding for my other job. So that was smooth. I'm, I'm also thinking zero episodes will be fun and cheap for us because we don't have to prepare too much because all we do is talk about us. (laughs) <laughs> and it's like one of those cheesy recap episodes, which I hope is better. You know, the episode like when you're watching Golden Girls and it's like, remember that one time we better do better do better do and they just shows. show one. Yeah, exactly. So I kind of wish those, those don't even happen that often, though. Like that was like a really 90s thing. I would oh, say yeah. even 80s. It, they happened all the time in the 80s. Yeah, I'd want those to come back. Well, we're bringing them back in this podcast. <laughs> what, what do you guys want to start off with? Like who we, we should talk about who we are because all we did for introductions this time was just our names. So right. we should talk about the story of like how we got together, how we know each other and keep it quick. Okay. All right. Yeah. But for our listeners, these podcasts are, are always aimed to be 30 to 40 minutes long and we go way over most of the time. Maybe we will hit that today. <laughs> uh, but wait, wait, before we, get into things alan yeah because i know sean did not listen how did you feel about Mm. b team so i'm excited because speaking of my anal retentive thing i am working on a b team intro segment music 
Uh, so that'll be really cool. In fact, hopefully I get it to you so you can play it in this episode. And right. <laughs> right. And uh, so I thought, first of all, Logan's elevator pitch for Cosmic Encounters got me so juicy to play Cosmic Encounters that I'm planning on playing it tonight with my wife and a couple of friends. Logan, did, all of you guys did an excellent job. The only spot of criticism, only one elevator pitch. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you, it was. That sounds bizarre. Oh, if we, <laughs> if, if we gave multiple elevator pitches, we would be approaching A team territory. <laughs> That's true. That's a really good point. Really good point. Uh, but it was really you guys cool. Want to and explain it, what the B team is. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the good, good, good point. Good point, the, Sean. This is your episode. <laughs> this is a zero episode. Uh, the B team is when Alan and Sean cannot be on, and my B team members are Will and Logan, who are on my other podcast, which is a Pokemon based podcast. And maybe we'll get to that a little bit deeper when I explain myself. But they came over. Uh, not only being fans of Pokemon, but they are also board gamers, and I get together every year with them at Gen Con. So they might not be the biggest gamers in the world, not that that matters, but they have experience on my other podcast. So it's very easy to move them into this podcast as the B team. By the way, for our usual listeners, I just wanted to say that if SBJ and Sean sound slightly different, it's because I got a new pair of headphones. <laughs> all right all right uh moving on you know what's funny though before before we get off of before we do everything else will had probably an extra 15 minutes of vanguard that i actually cut from the show because <laughs> he was really talking about vanguard there uh it really made me appreciate how much you guys are really into trading card games which is probably a good segue into all about you and what kind of games you like and how you got involved with us, SBJ. Yeah, so I am SBJ. I said that before, but hopefully... I, I'm only saying that because when I listen to podcasts, it takes me a while to figure out whose voice matches what name. So I am SBJ. Hopefully that helps. And I host this podcast because Sean and Alan asked me to, and I met them at Gen Con almost this will be our fourth gen con together i'm excited and i met you guys before you even produced two rooms in a boom you were still doing uh like demo copies and you didn't even have floor space you were just like running around in the open asking people if they wanted to play registering That's for events right. is bull crap man you can get away with anything but as soon as you become official you can get away with nothing you gotta stay off that grid <laughs> so I met you guys uh, there, and then it was this past 2015 Gen Con where I was actually talking to the guys with Board and Board with Life about their podcast, and then you guys like snuck over and you're like, "Don't talk to them, talk to us." <laughs> yeah, I I was a big fan of you, and just interpersonally because you would come by and always play Two Rooms and a Boom. Oh, by the way. This voice is Alan Girding. I'm still Alan Girding. This is me. And I made a game, Two Rooms at a Boom, with Sean. And we had a whole bunch of people want to publish it. And so Sean and I made the really selfish and stupid move. Like, so many people want this game. Why don't we start our own game company? So here we are, Tuesday Night Games. And then I was... So I... SBJ thought, man, this guy's really nice. I really like him. He keeps coming by. And then when you were at the Board with Life podcast, I couldn't help but think, what the crap is this guy doing here? I thought he was just some kind of guy that only likes to play two rooms and a boom with me because I live in my own personal bubble. And the idea that you had a life outside of two rooms and a boom was just <laughs> too much for me to handle. But then I learned you had this amazingly popular Pokemon podcast. And I always wanted to do a Tuesday Night Games podcast. So, of course, I said, hey, you want to do a Tuesday Night Games podcast? And you said, hell yeah! I did. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, and my, my podcast, by the, the other podcast, it's called It's Super Effective. And, yeah, I guess it's popular. It, do, it does well for itself. 
here's a little callback because so popular i saw a kid on campus because i'm a professor and i saw a kid on campus and i said what are you playing because he was playing his 3ds and he said pokemon i don't remember which one and i said do you listen to any podcasts and he said yeah i totally listen to it. it's super effective why do you ask so total random cleveland <laughs> student out of nowhere totally is a fan of it's super effective so it's that popular you know if i could if i could make a living off podcasts i would just keep doing podcasts I enjoy podcasting. That's why I was so excited when you guys asked me. I was like, yeah, another podcast under my belt. <laughs> what about you, Sean? Who the hell are you? Uh, hi, I'm Sean. And if you ever hear this voice, it's because of Sean talking. Nope, nothing. All right. I'm Sean. Um... <laughs> I'm laughing, but I didn't want to interrupt you, man, because it was so good. <laughs> I'm uh... Sean uh... also has the crappiest connection. That's like we're, we should talk about in this episode things that we really need to fix and one of them is sean's skype connection but keep going because i didn't hear any of that did you hear any of that no, i didn't get any of it wow i'm alan's uh partner at tuesday night games my connection is terrible uh but there's not much i can do about it right this second so you guys are just gonna have to deal with it uh, um met sbj you know roughly five minutes after every event that alan just described uh, because I was probably off doing something else, and he was like, hey, this is SBJ. He's going to do our podcast. I was like, cool, sure. Um, I'm a big fan of role-playing games. I like light sort of trick-taking games and filler games like Alan likes. And um, I've really gotten into, like, experimental games that put you in a new sort of um, experience, like um, Keep Talking or We're All Going to Explode. What's that game called? Keep, keep talking, talking and, and nobody explodes and yeah. nobody explodes and i really liked um shit what's it called that's how much you liked it i <laughs> yes. loved it it was really good though you guys should check it out on board game geek um <laughs> <laughs> so that's what i bring to the table just a loose knowledge of titles and experiences in games and um i've really liked being part of the show so far well, that's a good, you, you bring up a good point. We should really describe what kind of games we like so that when people listen to us talk about games, they understand the perspective from which we're coming. So, Sean, what would you say is one of your favorite games of all time then? If you had to choose, what's the first thing that just popped in your head? Because let's not waste time. D&D &D popped into my head. Boom. Okay. Boom. Uh, what pops in your mind when you say worst game? Worst game. Man, nothing. It's just like a haze of unmemorable, time-wasting games. You know, like, there are so many games that were bad experiences, but I never played them again, and so they just become, like, you know, memories that you've forgotten, right? And I could think of... I can't think of any, because I have a bad memory for games. But games can be a stupid hobby when the games suck. It's like the worst hobby in the world. You've got to, like, learn the game, teach the game, play the game, buy the game... And if it's not a good game, it's a bigger waste of time than, like, being into bad movies, you know? Totally. Uh, what about you, SBJ? What games are you into? I am into... Oh, man. I have, like, two spectrums in it. I, th I feel like this goes for anyone. It just depends on what kind of mood you're in. But I have to say that on our shared Google Doc, SBJ has written, I like poopy garbage games. <laughs> No, I wrote I like garbage games. Somebody else inserted the word poopy. Oh, it wasn't me. <laughs> it was me, Sean. <laughs> it's, it's even better because of how it broke <laughs> up. I can't tell if he's doing it on purpose now. I can't either. Um, All right. Go on, though. Uh, my, probably my favorite type of games are hidden roll games. Oh, oh sweet. Oh, well, that's, that's kind of a lot of what I make. But... You, I think of the three of us, you're probably the bigger Euro fan, and you're definitely the TCG fan trading card game, because I'm not so much into trading card games. Sean's into Hearthstone, which is a hybrid. As you know, it's a card game, but it's online. But you're the TCG guy. Yeah, I, I, played, I played Pokemon TCG competitively for two years and did okay, did better than most, I should say. Um, and then I started getting very into Netrunner, but uh, the Netrunner scene in Milwaukee is 
God awful. No one. Pretty cutthroat. I went. I, I've tried searching Reddit, Meetup, Facebook groups, Craigslist. No one in this damn city plays Netrunner. So. And all you got was a loss of virginity. Yeah. No. no uh, uh, Pokemon though is very big in in the Milwaukee area, but yeah, I uh, I also really like uh, games that Sean doesn't like. So that involves Machi Koro mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, Power Grid. Grid of Power. Grid of Power. Power Grid is probably one of my favorite games, and it's very, very Euro, and I just like, I like that it takes, like, three hours long. Seven Wonders, that's my least favorite game. Oh, Seven Wonders is no Sushi Go. It's no Seven sushi Wonders go. is no Sushi Go. That is a good call. Uh, what about you, Alan? What games do you like and not like? Uh, well, so, I'm with you. I, I really like social games I, for me it's more about the end experience than the game itself so whatever is the means to the terrific ends is what i'm all about so basically i really like after a game we either have a memorable experience that we'll be able to share with each other for po possibly ever or if it's just having fun and we feel closer together so my favorite games are the cooperative version of monikers usually comes up a lot and it's played a lot so we've talked about monikers alike uh, a lot in the past i really like it because it's quick it has very low learning curve very shallow learning curve so everyone gets in and everyone enjoys it and by the end of it everyone has these inside jokes and you may remember those forever for the rest of your relationship with the people with whom you play you can have those inside jokes that sometimes happen so my least favorite games are the opposite of that which they're memorable for all the wrong reasons or games that are basically solitaire games where i'm just playing for my own personal gain, and i'm hoping everyone else loses and there's very little interaction during the game and at the end it's just like, oh, surprise, I won. Everything I was doing on my own ended up to be better than what all of you guys were doing. I don't even remember who I played with, but I beat them. <laughs> so if you're looking for heavier Euros, I'll totally play them. I really like playing heavier Euros if I'm totally relaxed. So after one of my best times ever was when I did the Tough Mudder, and I ran it in like two hours. So we're talking electricity and extreme obstacles i was so tired for days but those couple days after running the tough mutter that was when i loved to play euro because i didn't really want to socialize too much and it was just relaxing to do my own thing yeah i totally get that because i feel like i've never played a tcg that i didn't have a lot of fun with i don't even really mind the buying aspect of it because i like to have hobbies and things that i'm collecting and working on buying and building but the social aspect is very difficult because it demands a lot of you to go out and meet new people and find times to play. You can't just throw it down wherever you are. I mean, you could, but everything about it is investing in your own personal deck and your own personal play style. Um, that's probably what drew me to Hearthstone was just the idea that I could just log on and there'd be an endless amount of people to play against and I didn't have to really worry about it. Um, so it wasn't the game that failed me so much as the social aspect of the game that failed me. Yeah, I think people play tabletop games as a form of mental masturbation a lot of times. And the more Euro you go, that is the mental masturbation where you just think, yes, I'm challenging myself and it feels good and there's a payoff so I can feel good about myself, which is a big turnoff to other people entering the tabletop industry because someone who doesn't really know how to play chess well doesn't like to play chess because basically when you have someone good at chess, it says, let's play some chess you're basically asking them, hey, uh, I want to make you feel dumber than me, so let's sit down so you know that I may be smarter than you. Now, aside, chess is not a good measure of intelligence. Chess is a great measure of how good you are at chess, but that's <laughs> yeah. what a lot of people think about like chess top games. I like chess, oh, too. Oh, yeah, I love chess. Chess is up there with one of my favorite games, but it's weird in the, if you want to talk about tabletop as a hobby like alan's talking about like i think i have really chess relationships but they're very specific with specific people and i think one of the things alan i think you're getting at here is that you really like games with the lowest barrier to entry period people who are non-gamers people who are there to have fun um whereas like i'll i like a high barrier to entry game 
occasionally, you know, um, I don't mind working on something and getting better over it. And there only being a few people you can play with and having fun because those experiences are really memorable to me. Um, they're just harder to get on a week by week basis. I think if someone really wants to understand where I'm coming from, as you're a new listener, I like almost all games, almost all games. But at the end of a game, I don't ask myself, how good was that game as much as how good does everyone feel after having played that game? And they're two totally different questions because you can have a really good game. that's so tight and wonderful. And you really respect the designer because it's just pure genius. But afterwards, I just feel like I want to take a shower or I feel like we're all worse people having had played that game. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that's what got me into the hobby so quickly was just the, it was almost something you couldn't capture with like a video game uh, or if you could capture it with a video game, it was, it was like in the Nintendo 64 days where everyone was sitting on the same couch and playing single couch some, multiplayer. Right. Yeah. And it, it it's almost a throwback to instead of four people sitting on a couch, it's, you know, five or six people sitting around a table and doing something. And at the end of the day, it's, it's almost like the game doesn't matter that much, but like the conversations happening around it do. And I, yeah, I have the, the game I, is around the table. I hear that all the time. Like, well, the real game's around the table, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I've for hosting a board gaming podcast, I do a very good, very poor job of bringing like, this is what I played this week. Uh, because recently I had um, four of my friends, both couples. So two couples, uh, move out of Wisconsin and they were the majority of my play group. And so when Alan jokes that like I play a lot of console gaming, it's because I, I went back to that because I lost so many people around the table that it was like, well, if, if I can't organize or have people over every night, like when I sign on to destiny or final fantasy, uh, 14, like there are people playing that and that's, really what I want and that's what I want out of board games is just to like hang out and talk with people and yeah we're playing the game but like whether it's the board game or a console game like I'm talking to those people we're hanging out all night we're making jokes and the next day I was like I don't really remember what I did in the game but I can tell you like that funny story we talked about last night and that's what board gaming does at least for me and that's why I got into it yeah, you won't hear me ripping on you for using the councils because I had two best friends that got married and were moving away slightly. And each one of those dudes, I bought them an Xbox 360 as a wedding gift just so we could stay in touch and still play games, even though it would be through the video games. <laughs> no, it's 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 a good way to keep up with people. And I'm I'm one for I like I don't like playing with random people or strangers, but like my friend has a game like i'm definitely going to try to get into it just so i can have a reason to like hang out and talk with them online i think i talked about it before too and my wife and i really talked about what doesn't mean to have a good time out because she would invite me to some things and i invite her to some things and it's just miserable when someone you love goes with some with you to some place to do something that they hate so it comes to this equation of how fun is the activity and B, how fun is the company? Because if you have really good company, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You could be watching paint dry, and it's an amazing time. Or it could be an amazing activity, and you could be with total strangers that you hate, and you'll still have a good time. But ideally, it's both of those. So I think that's also continuing to understand where I'm coming from with games, because there are plenty of games out there that are so good, I could play it with people I don't necessarily enjoy, but those are very rare. So the most part, for the most part, I enjoy games that are fun on their own right and help enhance the companionship. Well said. I'm oh, looking, thanks. I'm looking at the notes here, and this is my poor transition, but you wrote the question, the podcast so far, segments and favorite memories. Yeah. Basically, like, what are we doing right? So, uh, like, we have table talk, and we have interaction satisfaction, and what else do we have? We've, we've done some business talk before. We've had one episode where we had a news blurb. Yeah, we had topic time. Yeah, topic time. I called it table talk. Listen, I don't even know my own show. No, no, no. Topic time is, is away from table talk. I think we've done only topic time like twice. Okay. 
if I remember editing that in. So like one of the topics was what well, topic time was like, eh, what ten to twenty dollar game should we get for people for Christmas? Yeah, I fell under that. What about you, Sean? What do you what do you like and what don't you like? I like um, when we talk about industry news. I really have a fun time with that. Like I really enjoyed talking about um, Asthma Day buying out the Catan rights. I thought that was fun and just sort of wondering where that was going to go. I liked really early on um, talking about uh, those like niche miniatures games, the boutique miniatures games and how that was affecting the Kickstarter market. So I really like that kind of inside baseball type stuff. Uh, But I also like, because I know Alan really well. um, So I like this with both of you guys, but I like finding games in common that we have from way, way, way back in the past that we didn't know, like learning new things about you guys, you know, like I I like when Alan talks about Warhammer fantasy role play, because the more I learn about that game and the more I learn about my own like RPG research, there's a lot of things that introduce to the world that are still super relevant and super useful in campaigns like chaotic mutation tables. You know, they've got the best version of that. Um, building your character and gaining skills out of the jobs you did, like you're a rat catcher and that kind of stuff. Um, so I like, you know, like we could always talk about pandemic legacy or whatever hot game everybody else in the world is talking about right now. And that's always fun too. But I like, uh, I guess those like, tiny things that only the three of us have in common are finding out that the two of us have like, Oh shit, I've played that game. Um, that kind of thing. Yeah. To piggyback off that. And I was, I was browsing the browsing, the R slash board game subreddit. And like once, once every month or so people always ask like, what board game podcast should we listen to? And I try, I try to sneak ours in there, uh, every now and then, <laughs> but, uh, the 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 reoccurring thing besides just seeing the 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 kind of the same list of board gaming podcasts that people populate is like they all all, all these podcasts that only talk about new games like okay they're going to talk about pan- pandemic legacy but like in 2 weeks they're going to be talking about something else and i think at least in our show we we don't do that mostly because besides playing like the hot new games, like a lot of us go back to games we play, like Sean is D and D, and like me for some reason I keep going back to Mashikoro and Alan is Monikers. So I, I, I'm not saying that it's an advantage, but it's definitely it always makes me think of like, well, I guess we could be talking about the new games, but everyone else is already doing that. And it's not where we're gonna like compete. You know, we're not gonna compete with like reviewers. They have the most incentive to talk about the brand new games. We have an incentive to talk about it just to be relevant. But I think um, bringing like a unique perspective on old games or games that are out, or like a lot of times, um, if you're like new to the hobby, like I've been for the past years, you get so caught up. Damn it! This guy's horrible. Am I right, <laughs> SVJ? <laughs> Is he gone forever? I don't know. <laughs> I think I think Sean died. But I'll, I'll pick up where he left off, and then he can just chime back in. Is we're coming at it not as reviewers, but just as three dudes who get along. And even though we've only played, you know, uh, two rooms in a boom together, I think we jive. And also, we offer the definite insider track of what it's like to be publishers and designers because where did you guys we talked about should we add foam guns hello and there's going to be a lot more of that talk all right so final question of this zero episode would be where we want to go with the podcast areas of growth and improvement yeah well i mean sean's connection first and foremost (laughs) That's what we need to work on to even have a podcast in the future with Sean. Yeah. Is he even there? Uh, okay, there he is. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Freaking me out. Don't be so quiet, Sean. I'm just going to assume you're gone. If I'm quiet when you guys are talking and... Sorry, that just means my voice isn't breaking up. So I'm just... I'm, just, I'm a little bit more gun shy when my connection's bad. I suppose that makes sense. Yeah, that would be a big improvement, though, is to make sure that the episodes are more solidly sound. Yeah, because you're a big quality entrepreneur, well, aficionado, SBJ. You uh, you really 
want it to sound it's from my opinion of sbj quality is probably almost at the top maybe even over content now that's overstepping but still <laughs> you're like because let's not forget the whole death of justin justin we had justin come on and no more because four people per episode is tough it's it's tough too and it, it was probably tough for justin who was on i think episode three and four who was like hiding under a blanket um the entire recording just to sound good <laughs> yeah that's one of the inside jokes is that you hate justin and that's why he's not here anymore <laughs> pretty much more or less yeah oh the other inside jokes before we go on to what we need to improve because i think sean's not going to chime in at all is how he always tells you to shut up that's always cute uh i said that earlier but i was breaking up <laughs> I said that was my favorite thing to do was to yell at people and tell them to shut up. All uh, comes full circle now. Yeah. <laughs> I also like karma. the story of how Monopoly is the exact same thing as King of Tokyo because your story, SBJ, of King of Tokyo was your friend said, yeah, let's play Monopoly. And then they went home. <laughs> Never forget that. That was a good uh, story. But we should get on topic because that's one thing that we've always done right in the past and we should continue to do is staying on topic in this podcast <laughs> yeah if you're listening to us for the first time don't listen to any of our previous episodes only know that we're always on topic and always on time <laughs> and then it's smooth sailing <laughs> yeah and I, so I, and i will say I didn't, I didn't get to say this because we were having uh audio issues before but i do like that you know you guys are publishers and designers and you you're done you've done the whole releasing a game um and I like that I'm kind of the like the voice of somebody who is not in that field. Whereas the podcast could be very I don't wanna say biased, but it could it could come off as of as that because it's like, oh well we're in the publisher slash creating mindset and I don't really You get to play devil's advocate. Yeah. 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 No foam guns. We don't need them. We don't so that's need them. That's what you like, SBJ, but what don't you like? What do you think we should improve besides Sean's connection? Uh, mm, Sean's connection's up there. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could get more timely. I feel like the episodes where we're really under a time crunch, we bring a lot more energy to the table. We bring a lot more enthusiasm. Um, and not that the long episodes are bad by any means, but... Um, I feel like being consistent is good. You know? Yeah, short and concise, make it sweet and short like my love life. That's that's what we need. Well, I think the the episode where you were going to Star Wars that night was probably one of the better ones because we were so strict on time. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think I think that came out more solid. The opposite, the episode after you saw Star Wars was in my opinion, it like kind of dragged probably because I didn't see the movie yet. <laughs> it was just like, our, imagine me re-listening to it. I was like, oh, when, when are they going to get to the board games? <laughs> this is what I want. Of like, Go if on, you can't Sean. be good, you should at least be short, right? <laughs> In board gaming or anything else. And so if we can have a short, you know, shorter podcast or whatever, then there's no, we lower that barrier to entry to get into it. It's like, well, it's only 30 minutes long. Like, what's the worst that's going to happen? Right. And if, if, if it's good and it's short, at least people want more. Whereas if, I'm not, and I'm not saying getting off topic is bad. On my on my other show, we we purposely avoid talking about Pokemon for the first 15 minutes, but that's kind of hard to do when you're focused around a 30 minute show. Um, and that's not to say in the future that we can't have longer episodes. That's eventually um, an area we'll probably grow into is to bump up the length of the shows. But as right now, it's just we're trying to focus on just consistency every week and 30 minute. Every week is something we can we've all agreed to to keep doing. Yeah, I also think there will be a lot more energy once we get Sean's internet working too, because I can feel it with you guys. That anytime Sean drops out, there's this loss of energy. Like, oh, now what? Uh, is this what we're saying even going to count? So I think that will add a lot of improvement. I think we need to talk a lot more about shut up and sit down than eventually start replacing ourselves with 
actual characters from Shut Up and Sit Down. <laughs> like sure. Matt Lees will come in instead of me, and then SBJ, we can get Paul in for you, and then Sean, you can be Quinns, and then eventually we'll just be their show. I'm I think okay that's with a being great... Paul. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I also think we should... Uh... Oh, I'm really looking forward to this. is uh, totally on topic, revealing the super secret projects going on. And I plan on revealing two of them next episode, including Sean. Do you think it's about time we reveal Super Secret Project SBJ next episode? Sure, yeah, whenever you want, man. Yeah, we'll I had that. a I had a friend who texted me after that last episode and was like, "What's Super Secret SBJ?" And I was like, "I don't know." And he's like, "No, come on, just tell me." And I was like, "I don't know, man. I didn't even ask him what it was. I just, I don't know." <laughs> Can't wait. So exciting uh yeah so i think that's that's where to go uh, yeah just cleaner tighter i do like the segments we have and yeah yeah i know you want to get rpgs in there a little bit more i'd love to as well yeah so i mean this is one big question for another episode is do we dedicate some of these episodes to playing an rpg or do we have a separate podcast with rpg plays uh, actually, it's funny bringing that up because I'm starting a RPG Pokemon based podcast Ooh. Uh, that will be on Twitch every Tuesday nights. So we're going to be streaming on Twitch for two hours a night, every Tuesday night. And then I'm going to make a separate podcast feed for that. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do SoundCloud because there's an article recently that SoundCloud has no more money. So we might have to switch to a different service. Oh, yeah. Also, YouTube. A lot of people have been telling me, why aren't your podcast episodes on YouTube? Mm. That's, and I said, I don't know. So SBJ much work. Knows. Oh, is it? Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot it of, is. It, um, it, because when you export a video, it, when you export a video file, it just takes really long. Gotcha. That is true. Hey, is this Pokemon thing the reason why the episodes have been coming out on Wednesday mornings instead of Tuesday nights? Uh, No, because I haven't started that. Oh, okay. All right. I'm just right. bad at my job, Alan. Hey, Fuck Tuesday, off. Tuesday night. <laughs> just because you might be in a different time zone, they still come out Tuesday night for me. Oh, they're at like 11.58 your time? Yeah. That's okay. still Tuesday night. Okay. I'm still on time. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I wasn't trying to give I you shit. Exactly I, was just, I was just wondering if that was it. No, no. I, just sometime Tuesday night. Some, it depends. Because if I edit it too early, sometimes when I get home, I forget to hit publish. Or sometimes I eat dinner and then finish editing it and then publish it right away. What do you guys think of this zero episode stuff? Do you think people will hate it? Or are we going to do better in episode 30? Let's talk about... We'll, let's we'll meta this one. Yeah, I doubt. No, I, I, liked, I liked this episode a lot. Uh, hey, really quick. I know we always stay on topic, but Valentine's Day. So suppose we're recording this on Saturday valentine's day is tomorrow but people aren't going to listen to this until 11 58 on tuesday <laughs> central time right uh you guys already celebrate it you have plans something you want to share with our listeners as far as valentine's we're doing our stuff on monday night i don't know what it is yet sounds like a man without a plan sbj you told me something about a heart-shaped pizza yeah we we got a heart-shaped pizza tonight uh, so real simple and then tomorrow night uh irene's gonna cook dinner some valentine's day dinner and we'll probably actually just like do a movie or something so this was awkward uh crystal's been begging me my wife uh to get nipple clips and uh so i went to ambiance the store for lovers i maybe i should get some money for plugging them it was awkward even it's like the devil's playground because not only am i going in for like laundry it's like no i need the actual nipple clips crystal and already has nipple clips not with me sean uh but yeah I, it was it was uh awkward asking for nipple clips but apparently she loves them i hate them they hurt a lot but she <laughs> she wants them on me so i'm gonna oblige this time very good all right, that Here's was that. lame. Cut that out. The tone again. <laughs> I was like, nothing gets cut. <laughs> <laughs> no cutting. Alan, uh, oh, we I... have big news too. We, we have news. Uh, we do have news. All right. Uh, Sean and I found out that you've been telling everyone the wrong Twitter handle to use. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, right. Yes, yeah. yeah. For, mm -hmm. for weeks on weeks, I've been. <laughs> 
telling the wrong tw- your the new Twitter handle is fantastic. It's all Alan. Alan, what is it? At play TKG. If you want to contact us via Twitter. Yeah. That's also like a good hashtag too. It's a really good one. I was telling Alan that it leaves a lot of room for actual tweets. You know, like the longer Twitter handle is, the more annoying it is to talk to you and things like that. It's short, sweet, to the point. It's got some action to it. Play TKG. And it also requires that you know that when we say Tuesday night, we mean it with a K. That's, yeah, there you go. No, it's a good Twitter handle. So you can follow the podcast or Tuesday Night Games slash the podcast on Twitter. It's at play TK. G. And Alan, where can our listeners find you? They can find me at Alan Girding at A L A N G E R D I N G. D-I-N-G. <laughs> and you can also find me with that same name on Facebook. I accept anyone's friend request because I'm lonely. Awesome. Sean, where can they find you if you're not breaking up? At Sean McCoy, S E A N M C C O Y. Look how smooth that was. <laughs> And Smooth as butter. <laughs> finally, you can follow me on Twitter as at dragging a lake. Otherwise, how do they email us? Oh yeah, you can email us at podcast at tuesdaynightgames.com. Yeah. We'll be back next week. Apparently, Alan has some sort of surprise. Uh yeah! my my goal, and actually hopefully for Valentine's Day, I'm going to crack open uh wwe superstar showdown which is nice a great two-player game that i played at gen con and i have not played it at home so that was my goal and uh that is what i plan on talking about next week and i guess that this episode is this is a joke we do where we wait a long time and then i say over no, you say finished! God, no, wait, I say finished. Oh, man, <laughs> this guy. Here's some other inside jokes. Sean doesn't listen to the damn podcast. He comes in and doesn't even listen to it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs>